Every esport has its pillars. Those people that you think of immediately as soon as you say its name. Maybe it's an incredible once in a generation player. Faker flashes into the brush, back to his e Jackie Love, oh. lying in wait, but it doesn't matter. And Faker, still the greatest player in the world. <laughs> or maybe it's an influential pro turned content creator. I mean, I just kind of felt like I was doing the same thing you were doing, right? Or maybe it's the game's most memorable one hit wonder. He's on stage, and X X X is your Smash Summit 8 champion. X did it. He's done it. A Pikachu has won a major Smash Summit 8. But when it comes to shaping the core identity of an entire scene, very few people have impacted their community more than James Chen, the FGC's iconic crying commentator. As a bona fide FGC historian, James was a content creator for the games he loved way before content creation was even a thing, painting a portrait of fighting games throughout the years with blood, sweat, and literal tears. It's like, so hard not James, to get emotional. We should have like, a, instead of a staring contest, we can have a crying contest. We'll just, we'll just talk about Evo until one of us cries. So how did this feline loving, sensitive soul of a man help shape the FGC into what it is today? And what was it that made James Chen want to champion a scene that seemingly no one else cared about? It's hype. It's just pure hype and energy. You just don't get that from, I really honestly don't feel like you get that from any other eSport. Oh, oh that's, the throw. that's it, that's it. Tokido is the Evolution 2017 champion coming all the way from loser's bracket. He's done it. Hey guys, it's Dimitri. Now, fighting back tears at EVO may not be easy, but you know what is? Switching to GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Be sure to check out the link in the description below. All right, so if there's one thing you should know about the most famous weeper in all of esports, it's that his career could have gone down any number of paths. For instance, you may not know this, but he could have started his own moving business. Dude, get mad! Get mad! Oh! Oh! Or he could have dedicated his life to dropping bars. Panoramic view. Look, I'll make it all manageable. Pick and choose. Kick and choose. Pick and lose. All you different crews. Look, chicks and dudes. Who is, is really kicking tunes? <laughs> And if he didn't pursue his obvious musical talents, he could have simply indulged his immense love of cats by becoming a vet. <sighs> okay, we've got cats all over the place here. I've got one on my lap, by the way. But fortunately for all of us, James decided to forego all of those enticing options in favor of something else entirely, choosing instead to devote himself, body and soul, to one particular pursuit. What do I do? I love the fighting game community. That's what I do. <laughs> As the old esports cliche goes, James was first introduced to what would become his life's calling by his older brother back in the early 90s. But it was when James first laid eyes on Street Fighter 2 that he fell head over heels in love. It was just so beautiful. And when you first started playing it, I don't know, like even to this day, if I just picture walking into an arcade and hearing dulcim elephants, like on his background and just the old voices and sound effects, I get chills. Like his brother, James began attending UCLA, and it wasn't long before he became an active member of the school's burgeoning arcade fighting game scene. After he graduated, James took a bit of a step back from fighting games, but try as he might to focus on other aspects of his life, he just couldn't resist their allure, especially when Capcom vs. SNK dropped in 1999, reigniting his interest tenfold. And this time around, James wasn't just playing fighting games. In his spare time, he could be found frequenting early online FGC message boards, helping to kickstart conversations between the different fighting game hotspots all across the United States and abroad. And while James wasn't involved in putting together Evo's predecessor, Battle by the Bay, in 1996, he wanted to help with its successors, B4 and B5, in any way that he could, even though those events paled in comparison to what would come later down the road. 
B4, B5 were all probably about the same, just a little bit bigger, maybe like over 100 people. And again, that was in a very, very small arcade in Folsom, California. And I remember that that was packed as well. It was another situation where it was just like inside the arcade was just nothing but hot and sweaty guys, you know, just standing all you know, packed like sardines. But as small as those tournaments were, James believed that they were the start of something great. And even though he enjoyed attending and participating in them, he was inspired to get more involved in the production side of things. You know, it's tough organizing these kind of events and I just wanted to make myself helpful and I tried my best to, to be helpful and say hello to my kitty here. Oh, okay. Excuse me, kitty. You know, I, I just, I liked being helpful and I wanted to do stuff. And then, you know, I started transitioning to doing a lot of the trailers and stuff like that because uh, I just really started enjoying doing video editing. I used to make combo videos. Now, of course, you can't make a great trailer without decent footage. So in an attempt to ensure that the FGC was well represented, James began capturing moments that no one else thought to. And the truth is that if he hadn't, we might have had to rely solely on word of mouth to know what the American FGC looked like in its infancy. When I qualified for top eight at EVO in 2003, James Chen took my picture for the top eight intros. And after that, I thought, whoa, James Chen just took my picture. So that was the level. Ironically, in an effort to preserve and promote these early FGC events for future generations, James found himself with less and less time to actually play the games themselves. And sure, it wasn't like he ever reached the competitive heights of a Daigo or a Justin Wong, but he was still a passionate player. One who had developed quite a reputation for his hilarious bouts of rage. and for locking in some pretty unconventional picks. A lot of people think that I'm, I love Cammy because waifu and I'm just like, oh, she's like, no, it's because she sucked in Super Turbo. She's the worst character in Super Turbo and I wanted to be good at the worst character in the game. Memes aside, by about 2008, the FGC was facing a challenge of its own the scene had started to become stagnant. At the time, Street Fighter's latest release, Third Strike, was nearly a decade old. And as fewer developers released new fighting games, people's interest and engagement in the genre really took a hit. In 2008, I still remember at one point looking around the room and going, I know like almost everybody here. Like I'm not seeing new faces. But just when it was beginning to look as if all was lost, Capcom dropped Street Fighter 4 and everything changed. Commentator talking directly to the players now. Oh no, it's all gonna come right down to this. Daigo, oh, Daigo Umehara takes it. And Justin must admit that was an excellent match and the crowd is on its feet. EVO 2009 breathed new life into the FGC. Almost three times more people attended than the year prior. Its production value skyrocketed, and as a result, broadcast talent had suddenly become more important than ever. For me, it was, it was probably one of the most defining moments of my life, because honestly, if it wasn't for that EVO 2009, I probably wouldn't even still be here. You know, I still wouldn't be here doing commentary and all that stuff like that. It was, it was that crazy of a, of a moment, and it was that impactful of a year, and really, really took fighting games to that next level. And, uh, you know, I, like I said, that, that post-tournament feeling is permanently like etched into my brain. Now, from that point on, James decided that his expertise would best serve the FGC through commentary rather than as a competitor. And thanks to that fateful decision, he has blessed us with some classic sound bites over the years. But those claps have just been really hurting so much. Oh, they just slap him in the face. He slapped just him. slap him in the face. Can you give him another hand? Oh! Oh! with the Ultra 2! Oh my! Is this not gonna be enough quite yet? But he's right there! What's the follow-up? And it just overheads him! Alex fights! Right down to the last pitch! I don't know about that! Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. This is it. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Oh! Oh! Did he get it? 
of time! Did he get it in time? He did! He did! How much damage is this gonna do? It's not gonna kill. It needs more. Oh it my killed. god! It killed. It killed Momochi! Now, if it wasn't obvious already, just because he wasn't competing, that didn't mean that James was any less invested in the outcome of matches. If anything, taking his own personal saltiness over losing out of the equation actually freed him to loosen up and have fun as a commentator. Craig has coming over me. I feel it all around me. I've been waiting for this moment. Oh, I love this time history. I don't know what this is. Now, of course, if you are a prominent figure in a competitive gaming scene for decades, like James, chances are you're gonna be tied to a number of different memes. But over the years, there is one that has truly endeared James to the FGC. The fact that it is simply impossible for him not to wear his heart on his sleeve. The man simply oozes passion. Like, he literally excretes it from his eyeballs. And it's to the point where Evo just isn't Evo unless James ends the show with tears rolling down his cheeks as someone accomplishes their dreams. Oh, he the, the, the throw. That's it! That's it! Tokido is the Evolution 2017 champion coming all the way from loser's bracket! He's done it! He has won Evolution finally! He's been chasing it for so long and there it is! Tokido with his first Street Fighter first place finish here at Evolution. Just one thing I want to say. Fighting game is something so great. It's, it's funny because I get so emotional about this every year, but you know what? Like, I, Tokido said it best. There's no other better way to say it. Fighting games are great. Why do you have to say that? Well, I know that's. <laughs> you guys don't know that's what got James the worst. It almost got me too. <laughs> I won't lie. And honestly, can you blame the guy for getting emotional? For the better part of 30 years, he has dedicated his life to ensuring that the FGC could grow into what it is today. He's lived through its darkest moments and its euphoric highs. And for him, being able to look back on that transformation is proof enough that his efforts weren't in vain. And that's something that even legends of the scene have shown him gratitude for. <laughs> How are you doing? Thank you for your hard work. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> When we were at Battle by the Bay, when we had our first gathering, there was like a whole 60 people like enter that tournament. It was like ridiculous. And like to see it be at this extent, like this is new even for me. It's like seeing your child grow up and be like the success. Now, unfortunately, just like the rest of the world, the FGC took quite a beating in 2020. The arrival of the COVID-19 pandemic meant that LAN events, the lifeblood of the FGC, were put on hold for a scene built upon the sacred tradition of popping off right beside your opponent in front of a packed room of hyped up onlookers, fighting games may have suffered more than any other esport, especially thanks to their terrible netcode. And while James hasn't been able to physically attend events and see friends he's known for decades in person, he told WCCF Tech that he remains optimistic that fighting games are only going to return stronger. Anything that comes out of this pandemic Really, the positive is that, you know, this has really kind of put that focus on the on the net code and and, you know, uh, made it loud enough, I think, for a lot of the Japanese devs to understand that in order to succeed in other countries where our Internet infrastructure is uh, awful, <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, that we kind of need this kind of thing. Perhaps that romantic optimism, more than anything, is what makes James such a lovable and inspiring figure. He hasn't just been a constant force of positivity and change, but he's become a trusted caretaker for an entire community that has produced some of competitive gaming's most unforgettable moments and beautiful storylines. And by assuming that role, not only has he been able to preserve the rich history of the scene, but he's helped to usher in a new generation of passionate fans, players, content creators, and broadcast talent that will ensure that fighting games are here to stay. And in spite of its recent struggles, for James, helping the FGC get to where it is today remains his life's greatest achievement. 
a testament to what a few devoted individuals can do when they truly believe in something. Street Fighter, for me, I mean, I've been playing it so much of my life. It's, it practically is my life at this point. And you know, the thing about it is like to some people, it's like that's weird that it's a video game or whatever like that. But you know, everybody needs that thing in their life to keep pushing them forward and to draw them and, and just keep driving them and stuff like that. And so for me, Street Fighter is that thing. As it stands, James will have to continue fighting the good fight from a safe distance until life and lands return back to normal. But when that time comes, I think we can all agree that we know exactly where we'll find him. Uh, I think James is gonna say it all for me tonight. I didn't do it this time. Do it up for James. Bring it in, James. I love you, man. I love you. We'll see you next year. Dude, Marvel is the GOAT eSport. Actually the GOAT eSport. Shout out to that dude at TI3 who, if you go watch the official broadcast for International 13, there's a guy who held up a sign at TI3 at the finals that just says, when's Marvel? <laughs> Shout out to that dude, whoever that dude is. You're doing God's work, sir. Bring it back, dude. Like, dude, give me some Marvel. You know what I mean? Like, dude, oh, that'd be so fire. Oh, it's Marvel, baby. Oh, dude, it's so good.